YouTube, how's it going? The Goat House is back 24 hours before the trade deadline hits, and we already got a bunch of trades going down, and I'm here to give you my thoughts and grades on each of these deals. This one, covering Leonard Williams, traded from New York to New York, the New York Jets to the New York Giants, the first time ever those two teams made a deal, so very interesting. Um, I, I feel very good about one of these teams in this specific trade, and not so good about another team. I'm going to break it down, give you my thoughts, and a grade. Again, we're doing this for, we've already done this for a bunch of trades and all the rest of them to come. And we also have a lot of content throughout the week covering each week of the NFL. Uh, and we have more content on our Patreon, patreon.com slash the goathouse. You can get score predictions, playoff predictions, mock drafts, all of those together in one package deal, and all of those updated every single week week we're also trying to get to that 40k subscriber goal so please get us there full nfl content not just in the season but in the off season as well covered you got you covered with free agency in the draft click that like button turn notifications on check us out on twitter at goathouse nfl there's a link in the description for that always tuning during live games and covering the nfl in there to the trade leonard williams gets traded to the new york giants the jets get a third round pick and a 2021 fifth round pick Um, But a couple of things worth knowing here, that 2021 fifth-round pick will turn into a fourth-round pick in 2021 if Leonard Williams re-signs with the Giants because he is going to be a free agent in this upcoming offseason. So if he re-signs, it's a third-round pick and a fourth-round pick. And another thing, the Jets agreed to pay $4 million out of the remaining salary for Leonard Williams this year. So the Giants... Get Leonard Williams and only have to pay two million. So that a small piece of this trade, but pretty interesting and I guess somewhat good for the Giants here. Um, so Leonard Williams kind of had a feeling he'd get traded. Kind of heard about that. They haven't been happy with his play. I guess maybe he's not super thrilled there. Uh, they got quite a few pieces on the D line. You know, youth. You know, young guys throughout the draft. Um, so for all those reasons that I just explained and the expiring contract, it wasn't really a surprise at all to see Leonard Williams, um, you know, getting traded to the Giants. Uh, he did have a solid game against the Patriots, uh, recent game. So that's something uh, interesting. You know, maybe he's getting going, and then now he's on the Giants' new team. Uh, something to get excited about, playing for a contract. They just traded for him because they think they can give him a contract. So that's interesting. Much like the Jets, though, the Giants are pretty solid on their D line. You know, they got a lot of just same thing. A lot of young players there. Um, and I'll reveal the grades here and kind of go in more in depth here, but I, I don't like this deal for the Giants at all. I gave them a D. Uh, what I just explained, you know, I think they have quite a bit of holes on their team. Maybe not holes, but maybe that's a little harsh, but spots that definitely, you know, they definitely need to get better in some spots. You know, let's not joke around here. They're pretty young in some spots. They could get better. They, you know, you can't be afraid to get better. But one spot where I think, you know, besides maybe starting running back, one spot where I think, they were somewhat strong and heading in the right direction was D-line. You know, they got a number of solid D-linemen. They did well in the draft. I know Leonard Williams gives you more of a pass rush presence. They have more of that run-stopping presence there. So I can see that somewhat of an upgrade. Um, another thing is I, th- I think they just gave up way too much. You know, a, a third and a fifth, and if they re-sign him, you know, I didn't even hear about that right away. I thought it was a third and a fifth. Uh, and they were planning to resign him. They must have the idea that they were going to resign him, and I still thought it was too much. But if they resign him, if they resign him, that was kind of part of it. You know, usually in these, the teams know they're going to be able to resign him. With that being, um, you know, a part of it, they don't really know for sure. Um, you know, to me, that's rough. You know, and it's going to be a third and a fourth round pick. Um, you know, giving up picks and surrendering, you know, what you could use to fill those other, you know, positions of need that are more positions of need. It's a little rough, and you're going to have to dish out maybe a little more money than you think he's worth. Um, You know, last year and the beginning of this year, inconsistent, hasn't been playing too well. He finally picked it up in the Patriots game, which I guess is somewhat impressive, and I guess you can have some hope because of that. Maybe he just needs a new team, but I'm a little confused about this deal with the Giants. Um, you know, I, I gave it a D. We're kind of go back, look at the trade details here. I just think a third, um, I, I think a third round pick alone, I wouldn't have traded that because expiring contract, basically everything I explained. Not the biggest need, expiring contract. Um, you don't really know if you can sign him or not. You had to give up more because you think you can sign him. Um, yeah, I, and he hasn't really been playing his best ball. You know, I, I think even a third was going to be too much. You see all these other guys, um, you know, out there with, 
expiring contracts, their value goes way down. And it seemed like Leonard Williams, that seems like his value with, um, you know, when he's playing solid and he's under contract and it's a solid contract. So it's just kind of confusing me to the Giants why they felt like they needed to do this. You know, it felt like they thought this would put them in position to start really winning games, which I'm not doubting them to start winning games. It just feels like they needed to do this. This is like the last thing they needed to really get going on winning games this year. Uh, and they can afford to, you know, give up ammo and then pay him a decent amount of money possibly. So I don't know. It's just a little confusing to me. Just didn't think it was necessary on top of I didn't think, um, you know, he was worth this much really anywhere near. Like like I said, I thought a third rounder alone would be too much. So I gave it a D. The only reason it's not an F is because, I mean, he's a, he can be a solid player. Um, you could turn him around. And like I said, they have a good D line, but – because they, I guess they don't have enough pressure coming from the D line. Um, you know, I think B.J. Hill really fills that department for the future. You know, Dexter Lawrence really can pick it up from the nose, um, and they have Delvin Thomas, and they run a three-four. You know, some people are starting to hint at that they could run a four-three. I don't see Leonard Williams as a four-three end. You know, so I don't know if I'm buying that. I think he's a three-four end. I think that's where he'll play. So interesting to see what they'll do. Um, you know, I'm just a little confused on by that move. Uh, you know, it's just an odd situation there. And the Jets get an A+. Plus, and I think you've kind of felt that coming. And they got a lot for Leonard Williams, a guy that, you know, they have a young defensive line. They got young guys stepping up. You know, Quinn Williams is a guy who's my number one player in the draft. Um, you know, he hasn't playing, been playing extremely great so far and missed some games. Uh, but he's a guy that I have, uh, you know, I think will end up being the best player in this draft class. I think he's that good, and he's a guy that can play multiple positions on the D-line. You see him at nose tackle a lot, but, you know, I think his most dominant plays came from, um, you know, all over the place in the D-line, mainly on, you know, on the end of the 3-4. And the Jets have the capability of, with their defensive players, switching to a 4-3, and it's just fine. Uh, And and like I said, a bunch of young players there that are playing pretty well. Their defense is looking good. Um, You know, the only thing they need to make that defense go from good to great, and I mean it, great, is – a pass rusher or two, and a corner or two. You have the D-line, even with Leonard Williams gone, you have the D-line, you have the flexibility to switch defenses at any time, and it would still be just as good, maybe better. You have the safety duo, I love the safety duo. Um, you have the linebackers, mainly the inside linebackers, you know, with Williamson and C.J. Mosley, as long as they're healthy. Um, and, and you drafted pretty well for the most part in some of those positions. Uh, and, and on top of all that, Leonard Williams was going to, uh, he, he was probably going to be out. It sounds like they weren't going to sign him back. You know, maybe he would have came back, but I just don't think they were signing him back. And you get a third round pick. And I'm going to go ahead and say the Giants, they just traded him for him because they think they're signing him most likely. So there's probably got a third and a fourth round pick. And I mean, it's pretty great. It's pretty great there. I know they used the first round pick, but that was a while ago. I mean, that's done. Um, you know, I, they just got great compensation for this in my opinion a plus for the Jets I mean I didn't expect them to get this much I really did it and like I said they have guys that will step up that are already stepped up in those positions and uh, I like this Jets defense just like I said they just need some of those spots and now they gain more picks um, so they have the ability to um, you know fill those few defensive needs and use the whole rest of the draft with the extra picks they have to go offense you know, get Darnold the protection. That that's the main focus. Give Darnold the protection. Uh, get the receivers. You know, get them some receivers. That's the main part. And you can use those few extra picks to get those few extra things you have on defense. I mean, or you can package those uh, picks together and trade up to secure that top offense alignment. Whether it's Andrew Thomas, whoever it is, Tristan Wirfs. Um, you know, we're just naming out some guys here that are supposed to be at the top of the 2020 draft. Uh, and that's great, too, because it's an offensive league, and Darnold will continue to struggle as long as that offensive line is pretty rough. I know he has to pick it up, too. Gase has to pick it up. But I love this trade heading in the right direction. Um, you know, they, they even though they can go on a streak here because they have a, you know, an easier schedule and they, they do have some talent, like I said, the defense, they, they, they know they ain't winning the Super Bowl this year. They're gathering these picks. You know, they don't need to hang on to Leonard Williams for just this year. Uh, I, like to, I like to steal a lot with the Jets. A-plus. For the deal, the Jets get a third-round pick, a 2021 fifth-round pick. Again, it's becoming a fourth-round pick. If the Giants sign, I'm going to go ahead and predict that they'll sign him, but we'll kind of wait and see on that. So they get a pretty good haul there. Again, I thought a third-round pick was even more, just alone was a little more than I thought he would actually go for. So a little surprising, and I did, to recap, uh, give the Giants a D. Confusing deal for me. Uh, Not not the biggest need at all. Pretty much the opposite of that. You know, it's and um, to trade this much was the main thing. That was the main thing. So I thought maybe they can go after 
a corner. Maybe they can go after, you know, the receivers are stepping up. Uh, but offensive line, you know, I wish could play a little better. Um, you know, if anything, I thought they would go for those, but I really didn't think they would trade picks because they're still kind of in that process. These two teams, that's the main thing here. These two teams are basically in the same process. They're they're in that same, they're not full rebuild right now. You know, they're, they're still in the rebuild, but they're kind of, you know, along in that process. I guess the Jets a little further along. Uh, than the Giants, but yet the Jets are the ones trading for picks. The Giants are, are giving away picks. It doesn't really make sense with the Giants there. Uh, but that's what going to do it for this one. We already did this video for plenty of trades that already happened. Uh, plenty more to get to. I know Jannard Avery just got traded from the Browns to the Eagles. we got to break that down. Trade deadline is about 24 hours away here recording this on Monday the 28th, so more deals will go down, more of these videos will happen, and more coverage of the NFL every single week, all year long actually. So please join us for that. Please subscribe. Thank you everyone for watching this video. Goodbye.